Hi, I'm Caitlin Patricia Weiler, Automotive Product Specialist and Host. Today, I'm in Southern California in Mike Fulmer's shop. He's the nephew to George Fulmer, racing legend. Now, let's check out the Super V. Hi. Thank you so much for having me here. So nice You're very to meet welcome. You, nice to meet you, Caitlin. All right, let's check out the Super V. Why don't you get in it and we'll show you what, what it's all about. All right, what do I do? Well, let me get the shoulder harnesses out of the way for you first. And you will step in with your right foot okay. first. Go to the center of the seat. There you go. Take your left foot. There you go. Okay. Then put your hands on the bars and slide yourself down all together, all the way down. Using those tricep muscles. <laughs> there you go. These are your belts, of course, your safety belts, all the safety, safety first. And we'll put your steering wheel on. And now you're in it. So that's how you would be in the car when you're totally strapped in the car in a five-point harness. I mean, are, are you a lot taller than me? <laughs> I can't see anything. Yeah, I'm a little bit taller, I'm sure, I'm sure. <laughs> this is great. Now, in an open-wheel car like this, you're only going to be able to see the tops of your tires and maybe the corners of your front wings. That's about all I can see. Okay, yeah. and then, of course, you see forward. In these cars, you have a few adjustments in the cockpit, only a few that compared to racing today, we have many. And back then you had, with this is a front sway bar, so you can adjust the front sway bar, you can adjust the rear sway bar. Okay. And this, of course, is a five-speed transmission. You shift, and then this is a brake bias switch to adjust the brakes from front to rear, depending on weather conditions and fuel loads. But so you track, never see the front of your car? You never see the nose, per se, but you'll see the guy in front of you, obviously, his gearbox when and his rear wing. When was the first time you raced this car? I raced this car in 1983. And Michael Andretti drove this car first in 1982 and won the championship. This was the first winning Ralt RT5 in the SCCA Championship Series. Wow. And then he, when he got out of it, moved on to form Atlantic, I took this ride over from, the, from him, from, in our, from our Sierra. And he and I are the only two that ever drove this car, ever professionally. And now today, it's been fully restored. It was never sold by the Arciero family. And I race it today in vintage car racing. So it's pretty cool that this car is still in my history as, as a pro driver, and it's never changed. So, well, thank you for you know giving me the rundown and letting me sit in here. This is awesome. I've definitely never sat in a vehicle like this. I couldn't, I could not articulate or explain it to somebody unless I was sitting here right now. So, thank you. So Mike, you've been involved in the automotive industry in so many ways, but when was it that you feel that you became that true automotive enthusiast? Like, what was it for you? Was it a race? Was it an experience with your um, uncle? You know, what was it? Well, I was raised obviously with my uncle and, and racing and at a very young age, I was introduced to it. And I knew right away when I was going to these races as a little kid that I, that's really what I wanted to do. I want to drive a race car, but obviously, that didn't happen right away. So I started like most kids do on motocross and motorcycles. Okay, motocross. And through that age, and then in 1975, I went to Europe and drive Formula Fords, which is similar to this Super V, and um, learned how to race cars and came back to, to America and started racing over here with cars with my brother, Bill, who you've interviewed mm -hmm. uh, in a Porsche 914. Nice. And then uh, ultimately moved up to open wheel cars. And then I went to work for teams that my uncle drove for Roger Penske Racing, Goodyear Racing Tires, I worked for them as well, IROC, which was a Penske company, and so several other teams that my uncle drove for, so I would learn the, 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 the expertise and engineering side of driving the car and setting a car up before I ever got into to really go pro racing. And then I was able to obviously go to the other events that my uncle went to his, in his career with the Penske, the 917s, the Can-Am cars, and then the Porsche RSR, 911 RSR, which I'm currently vintage racing today. So you need to tell me that the car that you saw your uncle racing in is the car that you're driving today in vintage racing? Yeah, the, the 1973 what? Penske 911 RSR is the car that I was able to find, fortunately. And my I don't think he gets how cool he is. <laughs> now, didn't I see the RSR at that Cars and Canvas event? Yes, the Cars and Canvas event in Irvine, we had the car there. Awesome. And we also, there was, there was uh, Troy had 
my uncle's IROC car there as well. So both cars were there, which have significant history right. with the with our family. So it was pretty cool to have them both there. Yes, definitely an event you do not want to miss next year. Absolutely. I'm sure I want to know, everyone wants to know, what were the results of, you know, all these years of racing? Well, and we can move on to the, to the room and I can show you that. Awesome, let's go check it out. This room, oh my gosh, I need a room like this. But this is not just automotive. I'm looking around and there's a lot of different things in here. So tell me, what what do you have in here in your trophy room? Well, basically trophy room is kind of trophy collection, model collection, my toy model collection uh, room. It has all, all the history of my racing is pretty much in here. Um, Which you, I see jet ski racing, motocross racing. Started in motocross, like most people, then went into cars, and then the, then went, the jet ski thing happened by accident. I ended up 21 years in that, so there's 21 Just by years accident, of, a couple decades. There's 21 <laughs> years of jet ski racing in here, um, and then back in vintage car racing now today, in the cars that I drove professionally. So, which is a lot, of, but the model collection in here and the my Porsche memorabilia collection, because I I'm a very big Porsche memorabilia collector. Uh, because of my uncle's relationship with the Porsche factory as a Porsche driver so much so, and I was around them so much. So that's what you see a lot of in here is the various eras of Porsches. Yes. And of course, all the cars that my uncle has driven in his career, a lot of them as, as toys are in here. Right. And then I have an extensive book, Porsche book and motorsports racing collection uh, history over there as well. Can I be impromptu? I see something. Can I? Yeah, can I... absolutely. So this is actually... This is your car, right? That is the, car, is the car that, that Al Arciero owns today that I, he and I both drive. That's the car that I helped commission get made. So it would be proper. It was made in France um, by a company. And um, we even have an autograph here. He signed it and we took these and, and we have sp we've sold these and they sold obviously very quickly. And uh, so it's pretty cool to have a toy and the real car. Yeah, this is so awesome. It must be really special for you to have, be driving you know, your uncle's vehicle and, and have it be in such, I don't know, great condition and that you're still, you know, yeah, racing well with that vehicle. It's, it's, it's really a kind of emotional for our family because it was gracious enough for Al Arciero to purchase that car and then for Al to let me drive it um, for the first time a couple of weeks ago at Thermal in an actual race. I had tested it before at Riverside, I mean at uh, Willow Springs, and, uh, and then to drive it at, at Thermal and actually compete in it was really, really a, a, an amazing thing to drive down the straightaway on the pace lap and know that I'm driving the car that my uncle drove under the Penske regime in 1973 in the 24 hours of Daytona with Mark Downey, who, who Mark was no longer with us. But it was just really kind of, it takes you back a little bit to be driving and then of course driving something that's so valuable financially is another thing on um, when you're racing it, but it, it it means a lot to us to have it and for Albert to purchase it. And we did a full restoration on the car, and we were able to find I was able to find a lot of the original parts that went on this car at the Daytona 24 Hour as spare parts. I was able to find those, and they are now on that car. So that car is 80 percent the real car. The original car was destroyed, was crashed. So that car was retubbed, which is, means it has a new chassis on it. And, but we have the original chassis tag off of the original car, which that was another story on how I acquired that. Mm -hmm. So we have about everything you can have, and then I have a tremendous amount of, of the literature and the press and all the information on that car that I acquired from the Porsche factory. When I went to the museum, I was able to go on the historic side, and they let me open all the books up from that era, and I photocopied everything that Norbert Singer did, the engineer of this car. And so it's just, there's so much history on this car that I had prior to Albert being able to purchase that car and to now be able to drive it. It's it it means a lot to me. Well, it's amazing that you've taken this car and pretty much made it back to its original condition. So I know that people enjoy seeing this car being raced. So not only is your family, you know, being honored, other people are getting excited and just appreciate what you're doing. For us to be able to, to share it with, with people and people that also have Porsches that restore them too and come out and compete as well is what vintage racing is all about. We were at Rensport uh, one year, Albert was racing the car then, um, Norbert Singer was there, uh, John Woody Woodard was there, and John Woody Woodard was the crew chief on that car for Penske Racing. So I got all those guys together to come over and sign the fuel cell on this car. So we have all those original signatures, and of course my uncle and Roger Penske. 
So the only signature we do not have on that car is Mark Donnie, who passed in 1975, unfortunately. So. so what are these over here that I see? It looks like a Toyota race, maybe? Yes, this was the, um, the Toyota Pro Celebrity Race that they do every year at Long Beach Grand Prix. Now you raced in it, right? And I raced it in 2004, and this is the, this is the way the car's finished. And I handmade each one of these cars and made a set for myself, and I gave a set to Toyota as a thank you gift for being in the event. And I was in one of the red cars because I was considered a pro driver, so they had us in the red cars with Max Pappas, uh, Dara Torres, Olympic swimmer, and then... Uh, Peter Reckle with Days Are Alive super, uh, soap opera star. So we started 30 seconds behind the celebrities, and this is the way we finished, two laps short of the race due to rain. It's the first time this race was ever in the rain. So, so where are you are? I finished right here, second. Right nice. Max Pappas won, and I was second pro. So I made this, and it's, it's, it's a pretty cool thing, and there's only two in the world. One's in the Toyota Museum, and then I have this one. So one that's what, in your museum. That's what, that's what this is. So Love it. Here we are in Mike's office, part of this amazing shop of yours. Thank you so much for such a great day. Thank you very much for being here. I appreciate it. Yeah, I got to sit in the Super V for the first time. All the nostalgia here. You practically have a museum for yourself. It's amazing. I loved it. I hope you guys all at home enjoyed watching and stay tuned for our next vid coming out soon. Yeah.